The White Porch Conversations. <laughs> How do you know when you started? I'm already gone. Have you? She's, he's been recording. So you cut all this mess out, don't you? I can. <laughs> well, I hope you all, because I'll tell you, this is two birds right here. Right here we go. Two birds. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and we want to welcome you to Conversations on the White Porch, right? Right. Right. Conversations on the White Porch. No, White Porch Conversations. White Porch Conversations. Yes. I got to get that down. Yes. Because there's so many good ways to say this, mm -hmm. but but it's White Porch Conversations. So welcome to White Porch Conversations. We are glad to be with you tonight to bring a little bit of joy and laughter, a little bit of wisdom. Right? A little bit of wisdom. We hope so. Yeah, a little bit of wisdom uh, to your uh, space, wherever you may be today. Hey, if you are watching live, you can uh, share it to some friends and stuff. Tell them they need to check this out. There will definitely be some stuff, uh, some content they do not want to miss today, for sure. Right? I, I get, yeah. And so. We are here, um, if, if you haven't joined with us yet, this is only our second one of these. This is what we're gonna do uh, this year is, is uh, White Porch Conversations here. And uh, we're, we're on the White Porch uh, today. Um, and basically what, what, you know, what, what my vision and my idea as we, it, was, it wasn't my idea to even do this. It was actually someone else's idea. I can't remember if it was Josie or Aaron. It was one of the two, but I think it was Josie. I think we'll give Josie the credit for it. So yeah, she's over there saying, yeah, it's me. Um, but as she talked about, I put a lot of thought uh, into how we wanted to do this. And so what we really wanted to do is we really want this to be like a real white porch conversation. We want it to be very natural. Um, none of the things that we talk about on here are going to be uh, discussed ahead of time, uh, not the subjects or anything. Uh, we just want it to be natural natural, normal conversation and just kind of see where it leads. You know, as um, I was thinking about the New Testament and about the way the church gathered, I really do believe with all of my heart that the way that they operated was just like that. They just kind of got together yes. and they began to talk and teach and share. Um, and it was just very natural, very organic. Um, there wasn't a lot of planning to it. There wasn't a lot of uh, uh, probably even real purpose as the direction they were going. It was just, let's get together, let's talk, and let's just see what the Holy Spirit can do. So that's what we're going to do on these things. And I thought, um, although this is actually the second episode, I did. we did think if we we're going to do a guest, um, the first guest, although uh, Kay was with us last week, and by no means is she a guest, you guys get to uh, hear and see her often, and um, she's a staple with us. But this is a true guest as far as our media that happens during the week. Uh, this is someone, I don't know that you've ever been a part of any of our media, no. have you? I don't think so. I think this is the first time. Now, she does, if you've never seen her, she is a, a regular host on Able Ministries, so she is an expert. She is, a, she's got a, she's a seasoned podcaster oh. at this point, um, and she puts out some stuff on there, but with us, this is her first time, and since it was her white porch that we were meeting on, it was her white porch, uh, when uh, we were talking the last time when Josie said, you know, it'd be fun if we just got on the porch and just talked. Um, it was with her. Been a lot of conversations on this porch, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Many kind. You're you're somebody that really enjoys sitting on the porch, oh, don't yes. you? Just like yes. the good old days. Yes. Um, do do you prefer the winter or the summer? Um, probably the summer. Yeah. Yeah, because we come and sit out here often. I mean, we, yes. we, we we try to come out here and sit with her, and we'll just get on the porch, and uh, we'll just talk and uh, laugh, tell some funny stories. We got a lot of funny stories, and this is definitely a porch that, man, if these walls could talk, they mm -hmm. could tell you some stuff. So if you are listening, watching right now, there's a good chance you've been talked about on this white porch. Right. Probably. <laughs> good possibility. So, um, so we're just going to talk a little bit, and... Uh, I'd, I'd written down just a couple of questions that I was just thinking about with, with you. Man, there's so much, seriously, I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke, there's so much um, wisdom that you can get from this from this lady to my left. I'm not saying it because she's my grandmother. Um, she really is someone that is seasoned in, um, in the kingdom, in faith, uh, a lot of amazing legacy in your life. 
um, I remember as I was growing up, um, you and uh, Aunt, I call her Aunt Linda, but she's not really my aunt, but I, I say Aunt Linda. Um, you guys would take me uh, to just meetings mm -hmm. and services. I can remember going into some little bitty places, some medium-sized places, some big places. Um, and you've just been around a lot, and you've 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 been around a lot of teaching. Um, the the first thing that I was just thinking about is tell us a little bit just about your personal journey of faith, because I know you were you were more or less raised in a Christian home, um, and uh, you know as, as you as you think about your story. And and as you look back of however, I don't know how many years you look back and you consider yourself to be a, a serious believer. But as you look back at it, like, like, tell us a little bit about your story of faith. What did it look like? Where do you think you are now versus where you started? Oh, well, um, I figured I feel like that my faith was um, was strong, even even as a, a young person. Um, I just feel like that, um, you know, as we were taught, uh, that my faith got strong and stronger. Uh, and then as you go into different areas, um, uh, of, of your life and, and, and listening to people, your faith becomes stronger and stronger. Um, probably now, I'm sure now it's stronger than it's ever been. Because, uh, you know, you learn so much of more of God's ways. Mm, yeah. And faith in Him. And faith what He can do for us and to us and around us and, and, and everything. I mean, you know, uh, just having faith in Him. Um, you know, we started, when I started off, it was, a, um, it was a little, I look back now, a little rocky road. Yeah. A little rocky road. And, and uh, I... I was talking to Linda, I think, sometime this week, and I said, I wished I had a known more things about faith back mm, then come on. than I do, than, than, than I know now, I mean, you know, like yeah. I know now. Because, um, you know, I'd, I'd had a, a, a little problem one time, and this guy said, well, you know, that only comes, comes um, about with prayer and fasting. And, and, you know, my faith then was, I didn't know much about it. Yeah. I didn't know much about that prayer and fasting. I mean, I knew about prayer, but as far as fasting and things like that. But as you grow in faith, I mean, you just get, you just get, you know, you get the way you could just believe, you know, you just believe God's going to do what he says he's going to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know I look at my life in the way that, <clears throat> and, and, I, and I talk about this often, about how grateful I am that I have people like you and Linda, the one that you just mentioned, um, you and my life as those influences because um, I am definitely where I am because you guys put me around it. But for you, um, you know, you started in more of a, um, a legalistic mentality yes. of a, a background of church. Um, and then you have shifted into more of a, not, not, that, not that holiness doesn't matter. In fact, I was just talking with someone this morning about how much I believe in holiness. Um, that's something mm -hmm. I believe in. I know you do too. Oh, yes. But there was a shift in your mind where it became less about the rules and the regulations yes. and more yes. about being an operation of faith. Yes. Um, yes. And I, I know that that's been a big shift for you um, and the influences in your life is yes. shifting from that into yes. faith. Yes. Yes, but sometimes if you're not careful, too, the enemy will take you back to that. Mm, yeah, and he'll come say, on. Say, are you doing right? <laughs> you know, he really will. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, and and I, I guess we are our only, uh, we are our own worst enemy. Yeah. We are our own worst enemy of letting the the enemy trick us into something, thinking, well, you know, uh, um, uh, that you know maybe that's not exactly right. <laughs> and and you know you have to you really have to. Uh, you have to build on. You have to have that faith then. Yeah. To see what God says and what He says to you. Well, one of the things I love the most about you that I, again, I see, I see is a big part of my life, and and I, I don't see a lot of Christians who are like this or who do this. But one of the things that I'm very grateful for for you that, and I don't know if you want to if you want to speak to this and expound upon it, but um, the only way I know to describe it is is you are a very eclectic. Christian. Um, you are someone who is willing to be open to a lot of different voices, 
a lot of different ideas. You're not closed minded. Mm -hmm. um, you are someone that keeps your mind very open. Um, you know, if there's a if there's a new a uh, piece of revelation or information, or if there's a if there's a preacher that that you've never heard of, and maybe has some teachings that you're not familiar with, you're very open um, to hear those things oh, and yes. to process through those things. So, as someone, you know, I'm very grateful for that because I do see a lot of people who are closed mind. They they're very closed minded, mm -hmm. and they don't they don't they don't open themselves up to unfamiliar people, unfamiliar teachings, unfamiliar ideas. Um, and I know that I got it, you know, uh, from you and watching you be this way. So as you talk to people, you know, about about them growing in their faith, you know, uh, you know, how do you process that as, as you're hearing new voices, new ideas, new concepts? I mean, because, again, you've been doing this for decades now because I can look back, I can remember in the 80s, 90s, um, you know, the Bishop Earl Palks, um, some of those voices that were teaching things that nobody else was teaching, um, you know, uh, and uh, on even into now, um, you're someone that'll read everything from Charles Stanley to Bill Johnson. Mm -hmm. I mean, just mm -hmm. two ends of the spectrum. I mean, you know, so as you process through, you know, trying to hear the different voices, because I think that's one of the hard things for people is how to how to take hold of truth, how to be able to receive what people are teaching, chew the meat and spit out bones, and, and be able to glean from different people and different walks of teaching and stuff. So as you do that, like how, I mean, how do you do that so well? Because I, I think you do that very well. Well, it, it's to me, it's only through the Holy Spirit yeah. that you can do that. Uh, I love reading all, all kind of things. Uh, I have found this out, that most of the time when you hear something and you get a little worried about it, you'll hear it again. Mm. It'll, oh, come, wow. it'll, yeah. come, it'll come across your path again. That's good. And then you'll, you'll know. That you'll know the then Lord. that, that that's, truth. Yeah. that's truth. That's truth. And we have to, we have to like what divide the word of truth. We have to, uh, but we cannot close ourselves off to to anything that comes across our path. Uh, That's good. And, and you know, I think sometimes some crazy stuffs come across our path. Absolutely. Uh, crazy Absolutely. stuff. But you have to, you have to uh, depend on the Holy Spirit in you to let you know is that truth. And like I say, it'll it'll cross your path again. I've had it to. I've had that to happen a lot of times, and and that's the way you learn by reading, mm -hmm. reading different, listening to different ministry, reading different things. Yeah. Um, I picked up something here the other day. I think it was done in like 1912. Uh, somebody had gave me a paper done back in 1912 of things, and I've got things that go way back. Some some uh, uh, teachings and things that if you will, if you know, you hold on to that and. If you read it, it's it's up to date today. Yeah, it's up to date yeah, today. Yeah, right. It's so you have to you have to just relevant. you have to yeah. read and don't throw anything in the garbage can. Yeah, don't throw nothing away. <laughs> yeah. Don't throw it away. Yeah, because it will, you know, sooner or later you're gonna say, well, that that truth came to me and I just threw it aside. Yeah, you you have to you have to ponder it in your heart and in your, and you have to have an open spirit and an open mind to receive what is being said today and what is coming across our path today. Mm, yeah. We really do. Yeah. Well, that was actually, it's funny that you bring that up because one of the things that I had written down as I was thinking about spending this time with you on the porch today um, was I was thinking about how much of a reader you are. And uh, another thing I appreciate very much because there's oftentimes you and I get to have conversations about stuff that you're reading. Uh, and I was just going to ask you, have you read anything lately that was really eye-opening that uh, meant a lot to you that um, because I think another good thing that uh, that we can do is to share things that we're listening to or reading and I know that you are a reader so have you read anything lately um not really that that would come to mind uh, um I've been reading a lot of Smith Wigglesworth oh yeah um yeah. sermons that somebody had posted had had yeah. put in a book that uh and oh man, are you talking about faith? Oh yeah. Oh. He was one of the the great faith men of oh, all time. You for talking sure. about you talking about that faith in there? If that won't build you up, won't nothing, you know, yeah. won't nothing build you up. But I really haven't. Um, 
haven't come across any any reading of any um, you know from anybody other than the Word of God, uh, you know of uh, things that's really just stuck out to me real, you know, uh, out there real real strong. Yeah. Uh, I haven't been reading as much in the last few weeks that I usually read. So. I'd like to read the Smith Wigglesworth. Uh, the sermons you've been reading because I love reading his stuff man he's one of the you know I know you and I we both love God's generals book and he's oh yes uh, oh yes yes he's one of those that's but, in there yeah he's a he's a he's a man of faith and as we read that it builds our faith up and in, 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 uh, to me it, it builds us up to know of what God is about to do yeah what he's about to bring forth and about to do in, in our midst and uh, uh, you know in our lives, it's a stirring. Well, that's and it's that's a stirring. it's funny that you say that because another thing that um, that I was going to ask you was, um, is there anything right now that the Holy Spirit is stirring specifically in your heart? Um, any any idea, word, um, and maybe it's just for you. Maybe it's something you feel like it's for the church. Is there anything right now that you've really been heavily pondering and thinking about lately that the Spirit's just kind of saying? Well, I guess my one of my uh, scriptures is in Jeremiah 18. I love Jer that first of Jeremiah 18, where it talks of uh, going to the potter's house. Mm -hmm. And and God has just said, well, we're being broken. Mm -hmm. We're being broken, and, and, and we, we're being cracked. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that, and, and I thought about that with this fasting. You know, that, that people, people, I think, are fasting that has never fasted. And, and I think... That that uh, now I'll tell you about me. I get a crack every Sunday, <laughs> uh, and it has to be filled up. I do, and and if people don't get cracked every Sunday, I, I just think something's wrong. Mm, come because, on. Because <laughs> uh, it, it's just so much revelation that God is putting out there for us. Yes. And I for agree us with. too. But I I just been thinking about that. Been thinking about that. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, of that that cracking where that. That that jaw was being uh, uh, that jaw was being uh, you know made and molded, and then it, it it wasn't right, and the potter had to start again. It's just like our lives. Mm. If we are not cracked, I don't think God can ever mold us. Mm. If we're not cracked, wow. And I think that we're really getting cracked, and we're getting cracked because we're going to see a yell. I believe like we've never seen before. Come on, it it uh, FCC. Yeah, and I and I and and I want I want people to really to really ponder this and to and to um, think about God and and to listen to the Word of God. God's bringing forth the great Word every Sunday. He's bringing forth the great Word, uh, and and but it's it's only through it's only through this this um, this vessel being cracked for Him, yeah. being 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 cracked and molded back together. Till we become that perfect so vessel, we get perfect, yeah. and you know, uh, because we are we are being molded into His likeness, and to into His image, mm -hmm. and when we mold, when we get molded into that, oh my, what are we gonna say? <laughs> what are we gonna say? You know, and we're gonna have to be molded into that to be able to uh, to go forth and to minister like we should minister. And she wonders why I want to have her on stuff like this. Listen to her over here, man. That's good stuff. Getting that that image of you know those moments in our life where we're cracked after the potter's mm. already been working on us. Yes. It's not before he starts working mm -hmm. on us. It's after. It's after. And then he it's says after. it has to be broken so I can start back to make you perfect, to finish what I've yes. started. The Bible says he's the author and the finisher of faith. So he starts it, but he also completes the work yeah. throughout that process. But you have to be willing. You have to be willing to be cracked. You have to be willing to for him to crack you and put you back together. Yeah. You have to be willing. And it's it's a process. Absolutely. It's a process. It's a hard process. <laughs> yeah. You know, because people don't like to be cracked and they don't like to be you know, we like to do things our way. Yeah, we like to feel good. Well yeah, we want to feel good all the time and that's you don't do that all the time. Yeah. You know. And uh you know, sometimes you compare yourself to other people. I know. Man, that you talk about God putting stuff in front of you multiple times. Three times this week, um, I heard the phrase, um, oh, man, what is it? Comparison kills. 
um, do y'all know what it is? There's a saying, and, and I've I, uh, heard a lot of pastors say it, but this particular, it's um, um, comparison kills joy, I think is what I heard. I think Probably it was comparison does. kills joy. But I heard it three times <laughs> this week, does. this idea of comparison, three times that came across my path. This week, so it's so funny that you bring yeah. that up. Because and then, uh, uh, then Linda, she calls me a lot. Uh, I, I compare myself a lot to her, uh, but you know we're two different people. And I was thinking this week, I was <laughs> thinking this week. She ain't going to week, see Elvis with you oh, no. this week. That ain't happening. <laughs> oh no, that ain't happening. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking she's gonna be praying for you while you're gone, though. <laughs> she she just she just, she'll call me and she said, "Oh Myrtle, I done heard from God this morning, and you're like, I'm so glad." And I think. Uh, Mary's done call Martha. Oh, Martha, she she'll make the bed been working. up. She she I'm working, I'm working, and Linda's praying. But you know what? I guess that's just God's way. Mm-hmm. Uh, she keeps me boosted up. Come on. You know, you got to have a, you got to have some type of partner that'll keep you boosted yeah, up. Absolutely. And, and she'll tell. And then, but then sometimes I get, I think, well, oh, oh, Martha, she's working. I'm um, and Mary, she's down there praying and getting. <laughs> a word. But from the anyway, Lord. I get the word of the Lord from her. Yeah. So that's just that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, having relationships in your life oh, that are yes. constantly oh, pouring yes. that into you oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I was going to ask you if 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 you know. Looking back at your journey um, of faith and your journey with the Lord, as you look back, what is it that, at this stage of your life, I don't know if I don't know if I would ask the question to say what would you go back and tell the younger you, or as much as what would you tell me? <laughs> I don't know um, which is the right way to word the question, but. Um, where you are right now and what you've seen and what you've learned and the revelation that you've gotten. I mean, if you had, if you had a message, um, like I said, maybe, maybe you think about it to go back to yourself, you know, 40, 50 years ago when you were early in that faith journey, or as you're looking at our generation, I don't know which way would be the better way for you to want to give that word. Um, what is Um, it that you would want to say? I I would think to trust God, to trust God. I can look back, you know, 30 or 40 years ago, um, where as you grow in Him, you learn to trust Him more. Um, And and you need to, you need to, uh, I I feel like you, you know, you need to study more, you need to, to read more, to pray more. I can look back over my life, and that's things that I have missed, yeah. That I have put, say, on the back burner. Yeah, secondary. Um, yeah, secondary. Um, uh, this generation needs to to uh, really get into a good good um, uh, church or a meeting that that um, really teaches the Word of God. Uh, don't teach rules and regulations. Mm. See, that that that's hard. See, that's it's hard to come out of that. Teach, teach the Word of God and teach, teach young people how to live for Him and, and, and that they can, um, you know, that they can overcome obstacles in their life, mm-hmm. that they can overcome. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just hard now that I see for young people. To me, it really wasn't as hard back then. Um, I mean, you know, I was in church all the time. If, yeah. if it went for two weeks, I was out for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know. And long services. Long services. <laughs> not, long services. Not an hour and 15 minutes. Um, We're talking three-hour services. <laughs> but be be willing be willing now to let the Spirit speak to you and guide you and direct you. You might think it's something crazy, mm-hmm. but you need, as a young person coming up now, you need to let the Spirit guide and direct you. That is the main thing. Mm-hmm. That is the main thing, and look for wisdom in other people. Uh, you know, uh, if you if you need somebody to somebody older to talk to them, and and uh, you know they tell me, well, I live in the old day. You know, a lot of times, <laughs> yeah. and I try to give them some good wisdom, and and I mean, in, even in in natural stuff, not only spiritual stuff, yeah. but there's natural stuff out there that needs to be brought forth in our generation now. Yeah. 
Yeah. That things that that's good in the natural, yeah. and and good in the spirit. So that that's my thing of looking back. Uh, I, I wish that I had done a lot of things different coming up into in, into 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 being a Christian. And uh, but now, you know, uh, we 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 can make up we can make up some of that. Oh yeah. Absolutely. We make up some well, of that. the Bible says he restores the time. Oh, yeah. He restores the time. Oh, yeah. So whatever I lost at a certain time period of my life, he can restore it in the time ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. For sure. I sure can. Yeah. yeah. Don't give up. Don't give up. No mm. matter what you go through, don't give up. Don't Damn. don't give up. Just hold. As the old song says, hold to that unchanging hand. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good Hold one. Hold on to it. I know I've been singing a lot of old songs lately yeah. <laughs> on Sundays, but I've I've been talking about the ones I don't love, but I love that one. Yeah. That's one yes. that I love. Yes. That one, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. Yeah. That's one of the ones that I yeah, love. No. And I think about sometime of Philip McGahey singing the anchor holes. <laughs> oh, sometimes I'll go around and sing anchor holes. Yeah. Those storms, they're raging around you. That anchor is going to hold. Oh, yeah. If you just hold on. <laughs> just hold on. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch the Super Bowl? I mean, uh, the national championship last night? A little bit. Did you watch the national anthem? Yes. Being sung by Natalie Graham? Yes. Man, didn't she just crush oh, it? Oh, she crushed I thought, yeah. ooh. You know her? You yeah. know who she is? Yeah. 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 That was awesome to see a yeah. Jesus a Jesus lover get oh, up there and lead the national that, yeah. anthem in front of all those people. Yeah. So I thought that was a great moment yeah, for the church. Yeah, she kind of done them little runs in that <laughs> yeah. song. But your 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 late husband oh. wouldn't have liked it. He would have said, that's not the way it was oh, written. They, they, no, he it's wouldn't have liked Because he wants it to be. No, no, no. He, <laughs> no, he wouldn't have liked that either. And that's what but. we should have talked about when we had you on, was talking about marriage. Maybe we'll bring you back on. Oh, you, you don't want that subject. you can give all the marriage advice. Oh, no, you don't want that with me. She's more like Paul. <laughs> that um, you know, it's better that I not marry. Well, um, you know. <laughs> no, Paul said it's better better to marry than to burn. But then he yeah. himself said it wasn't for him. So maybe, like I said, you're like Paul, and yeah, yeah. Know. So that's a that's a funny thing that we talk about. But uh, well, thank you for coming to spend Enjoyed some time it. with us today. Enjoyed and I, 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 for one, no joke. Um, I, I love you. Um, you're my grandmother. Uh, but more than that, you're one of the great God influences in my life, and that's why it was so important for me to have you on here. And um, there's no doubt that I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for you dragging me around to churches. And um, I see a lot. I see a lot of you in me um, from again believing in the power of holiness um, and believing that we are called to be holy and to live the life yes. that that He's called us to live. But at the same time. Uh, being open to fresh word, fresh revelation. Yes. Um, I know that, man, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have that influence from you in my life. I don't know how close-minded I would have been, but I am grateful today that I'm someone that tries to tries to find the word of God in anything. And every now and then, every now and then, I might find a moment where I don't find the word. But if you look mm -hmm. for it, you can usually find a little bit. Oh, yes. And oh, yes. some of the worst teachers and the worst preachers oh, yes. and the oh, craziest yes. people. Oh, yes. You can find a little bit of God yeah. in it. So if you'll look for it. That's, that's right. what I've learned. That's right. So thank you, Momo. Myrtle Belanger with us today. Com Enjoyed white porch it. conversations. And then we're on her white porch every week. So we appreciate you letting us use it. But she's oh, proud of this good. white porch. Oh, yes. She tells everybody oh, yes. she's got the prettiest house in Lincoln. And if she That's does, right. you can see it's still Christmas time here. <laughs> she said it's probably going to be up until about March. Uh, so we'll see uh, how that goes. But if you guys are uh, a little little down about Christmas being over, just ride by here about oh, yes. 8 o'clock oh, night. Yes. You'll see the house lit up. and the Christmas decorations still here. It's Christmas year round at Mormon's oh, house. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. We should be happy year round. Yep. And you're going to be headed out in the morning to in go to morning. Baton Rouge to yep. go see Elvis. So we hope we pray for safe travel and mercies. Thank you. For you. We know she's going to have a good time. She was supposed oh, to be yeah. with us on a little trip, <laughs> but anytime Elvis gets into the picture, she's going to pick Elvis oh, every yeah. time. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, but I love you. I mean it. I love, love you, you very too. much. Thank you for sharing a little bit of your story with us. We hope. We hope you enjoyed this conversation on the white porch. And uh, listen, if um, if anything that she said um, is something that really touched you, let us know if there's something that you want to ask her about her story or something that she said today that really moved your heart. You know, I know she'd be more than welcome, uh, more than willing to um, 
talk to you about it. And she is a great voice. She's a great um, uh, influence in your life if you need her to be. Um, she can teach you about a little bit of everything from the spirit to, to canning stuff mm -hmm. to growing oh, yeah. stuff to uh, saving money. Uh, she can teach you all of it. So um, we appreciate her being with us and we appreciate you watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next week. Uh, next week we have a, a guest. Uh, Clay Turner is going to be on the white porch with us next week and super excited Ooh. about that. You'll hear a little <laughs> bit of his story. He's got a pretty awesome story of how he kind of came into my life and what the Lord was doing at that time and then how the Lord has dealt um, with what it is he was searching for and how God kind of helped him find it. So a very cool story next week. And I'm sure he's going to want to talk about the Georgia Bulldogs next week as well, uh, winning the national championship. So uh, we'll see you guys next week. Love you guys. Thank you for being with us. We're out. I know you're going to ask some dumb questions. <laughs> I hope y'all got that.